The topic of this work is market motion capture. So given a scene recorded from multiple viewing angles where multiple objects are interacting with each other, like these hands and with this ball, and uh, given a template model for each of these objects in the scene, together with the underlying kinematic structure, what, what we want to do is to recover the motion of the scene, yeah. sorry, in terms of angles and position of each of these elements in the structure. So that, as, the, as an extra benefit, this provides also the full 3D geometry of the scene um, at each time instant, which can be used for simple scene rendering like this one, or in uh, application like human computer interaction and robotics. So hand motion capture is a very old topic in computer vision, and these are only few of the past approaches proposed in literature. However, most of them had focus only in tracking a single hand in isolation. Few recent approaches had deal with a hand interacting with an object. However, they, they mainly resort on the assumption that the hand can be segmented based on color, on skin color which simplifies clearly the pose estimation problem. How instead do we deal with a scenario like this one where clearly the two hands cannot be segmented, cannot be distinguished based on color because they have the same color? And also where collisions um, are predominant and also the, the, where the multiple occlusions preclude the visibility of a significant part of the scene, think about under the, the hands of this and where also the self-similarity intrinsic of the hand structure makes this problem even more harder than standard human motion capture. So how do we deal with this? So let's look at our solution. We first assume that each trackable element in the scene can be modeled as an articulated deformable object. It is like a surface deforming according to an underlying kinematic structure. For instance, a hand which is a flash with a skeleton inside. And we model this skeleton with 20 bones for a total of 35 degrees of freedom arranged as in figure. And we encode the pose C of this skeleton using exponential maps. Then we capture the shape of each element in the scene using multiview stereo, but one can also use Kinect for this purpose. As a result, we have a triangular mesh representing the object at a reference pose. Then we model the deformation of this mesh using linear blend skinning, which defines the motion of a vertex as the linear combination of all the motion that the vertex will undergo if rigidly attached to every bone one at a time. So all of this provides us a smooth deformation of the surface according to the underlying kinematic structure. And this deformation is guided by some weights, alphas in the formulas, which are assumed to be known a priori or estimated using well-known technique. All this model provides us with a scene model telling us how the, the scene will look like at a given pose C. By rendering this model, the generated images can be then compared with the input video frame at a specific time instance. And clearly, the pose minimizing the error in this comparison is the, actually the pose we are looking for. Typically, this comparison is performed in the feature space and typically using edges and optical flow. While edges provide fairly good cues about the displacement of the hand in the scene, optical flow provides a sort of temporal continuity. However, in our experiments, we realized that in case of strongly interacting hands, like this case, when hands touch each other, edges might disappear due to color similarities, and optical flow is, might not be able to compensate for this lack if this happened for multiple consecutive video frames. Therefore, Edges and optical flow are not sufficient for our task, and an additional stronger cue needs to be used. So we did this by adding what we call salient points. In particular, we choose to learn, discriminatively learn, the appearance of some characteristic features on the hand and detect them on the recorded videos. In particular, we focus on fingernails due to their distinct appearance and rigid deformation behavior. However, we realized that, that due to the self-similarity between these nails, it was not possible to train a classifier to also discriminate between nails of different fingers. And tracking in general does not help due to the frequent occlusions. Therefore, when you have a video frame like this one with the detections found by the classifier, 
you know that these detections are in a one-to-one -one mapping with the vertices on the hand model corresponding to the fingernails. But you don't know this mapping. So how do we find it? So what we did is that we take the original video frame as before, and we superimpose it with whatever best estimate we have for the hand pose at that frame. And then we build a matrix encoding the distances between these detections and the nail vertices on the mesh. In figure, you can see the lighter areas indicate low distance, while darker areas indicate high distance. So now, the trivial way to perform this task is to use the closest point association. But if the, our initial guess for the hand pose is just a bit off from the actual one, like in this case, this will clearly fail. A better way is to choose the one-to-one -one mapping minimizing the aggregate cost of the selections. And this actually pro proposed the, the, um, the correct solution. However, the classifier is not perfect. There could be missing detections and false detections. And to cope for this, we add an additional row and an additional column indicating that if selected, that the corresponding detections or vertices has no match. And this actually provides the correct association again. All of this concept can be formalized as a bipartite graph matching problem without layers, which solution is well known to be foundable in polynomial time using integer programming. So therefore, we took all our input videos and we extract from them edges, optical flow, and salient points. And we do the same for our generative model. Now, since, as described before, for salient point, we have a sort of correspondences between vertices on the mesh and point on the images, we extract the same also for edges and optical flow. The use of correspondences allowed us to formulate the pose estimation problem as the minimization of the reprojection error of these correspondences. And since this is a nonlinearly squared problem, where all the terms inside the norm 2 are differentiable, we choose to minimize it using Levenman marker. However, the initial correspondences may not be correct, so they have to be estimated jointly with the pose. And for this reason, we adopted an alternating optimization scheme where given the initial video frame, well, a, uh, a video frame and an initial guess for the pose, we first solve for the correspondences and then for the pose, and then again we iterate the process until convergence. So if this gets stuck into a local minima, we initialize it, the entire process randomly using simulated alleling. However, due to lack of information or overfitting, the optimization scheme we propose can lead to solutions like this one. And since it's clear that we know that these are not plausible solutions in reality, we added an extra term to our ob objective functional to minimize, accounting for collision and self-intersections. Uh, self in particular, at each algorithm iteration, if two faces are found colliding, then a local distance field is generated, penalizing this collision. So we tested our method on different uh, real-world scenarios, and in particular here is an example. So on the left you can see the original video frame, on the right you can see the estimated pose, while on the top right corner you can see the estimated pose overlaid with the input video frame. We the video were captured using a setup of eight synchronized video cameras capturing full HD footage at 50 Hz. And the total degrees of freedom you can see here in this scene is 70. And this is a case with strong occlusions. So what I want to show now is that whatever additional object we have on the scene, you just need to scan it or provide a 3D model of it, and then just add it to the kinematic structure of the scene. The properties of the linear blend skinning operator will allow you to treat all these objects as a unique one by connecting their root bones with a virtual scene bone. This means that we can use our algorithm as it is and collision and occlusion between different objects will be handled transparently as, as self-collision and self-occlusions. For instance, this is the ball sequence that you saw 
in the introduction with the overlaid videos on top. And this is an action of taking off a ring. Uh, the ring is very small here. And this is a paper folding example where also the object in this case is deformable. So in conclusion, we propose a method to estimate the articulated motion of hands interacting with objects. To cope with the many degrees of freedom, 78 in the last sequence, the paper one, we propose to use multiple visual cues and in particular salient points. We show how to deal with collision and self-intersections using distance fields and to cope with the self-similarity between the fingers using, by solving the association problem as a bipartite graph matching problem. On a quantitative evaluation, we discover that our method is at least three times more accurate than the current state of the art. And with this, I would like to end my talk. Thank you. I was wondering uh, uh, when you penalize, um, when you have this distance term, uh, whether you might have a side effect that objects that you manipulate might be floating in, in the air somehow, so that it, so they're not kind of... You were talking about the distance field to penalize exactly. the collision. Yeah. No, so um, the, the distance, uh, it's, I mean, the distance field is very local, and it will be generated only if necessary. So in practice, it doesn't happen at all. So, and, uh, and it will be at maximum one millimeters. Okay. Okay. So it's very small. Um, could you comment on run times and also comment on non-rigidity of the flesh of the model, things like that? So can you repeat that again? Comment on non-rigidity, so interaction between flesh and in parts and that kind of thing. A comment on the non-rigidity, for example, yeah, the I mean, do, you, do you find that that's a problem, that real hands aren't rigid objects? I mean, they're articulated, but the flesh is not rigid either. If it's okay, so I mean, our main assumption is that all this deformation can be approximated as an articulated deformable object. Obviously, the hands is, I think it's a very good case where the articulation is, I mean, it's a very good approximation, I think. So this, does this answer your question? <laughs> Maybe you can take it offline. So um, it looks like this, this, your, your approach is to basically model everything and then use those accurate models to do analysis. Mm -hmm. Now there seems to be scope for actually doing some of that modeling online. Like you know, you start with some model of some part of the world and then as you manipulate things you're actually able to figure out that you are manipulating a ball or a sphere and then get a 3D model of that mm -hmm. as you go. Well, I think this is a nice future work, yes. I mean, it's a pretty nice idea. Um, yeah, I mean, here, I mean, what we can do is to estimate the parameter inside the articulated structure, like the, the bone length. I mean, we don't do it in this work, but it will be easy to, uh, to, um, to extend it, to estimate the, the bone length and adapt the model. But yeah, um, estimating also the shape of the object that the hands are handling that it will be a very nice extension, yeah. And since we have the very first Twitter question, great. What is the running time of your method? <laughs> so um, actually, no, I mean, it's, um, it takes, it's a local optimization, so it takes, at the moment, 20 seconds per, per frame. So it's not optimized for speed. But the thing is that you have to account that these are full HD videos. So obviously, it will be speeded up by using, by zooming in the area where the hands are and also by using less uh, vertices for modeling the hands, which also will decrease the accuracy, but it will for sure speed it up the, the optimization. Okay, let's thank the speaker again.